and go the other way. And I love dogs, so it's fine. It just that was a good reminder. So the leg in front of the other, that arm comes up, reach for your wrist and stretch. Take a moment here, breathe into your side ribs. Well, so good this morning and release and release oh, okay let's go wide you can face in studio can face the mirrors and then heels turned in toes turned out i'm going to drop down and then press your knees back and you can shift side to side so the tibetan rites have a lot of forward bending and back bending kind of like Sun salutations have a lot of forward bending, back bending, not too much side bending, not too much by way of twists. We'll bring the twists in later. And then let's uh, come up and your feet are squared. Use a block if you need to, or fingertips down, palms down. And then reach for your ankles or your outside knees, lower your head, shake out your head, release the back of your neck and breathe. So my hands just went like to the back of the calves and I'm folding in, like I'm really trying to bring my torso closer into the space between legs, between knees. Yep. And then release and come on up. All right. And then we bring the feet together. Hands are the heart center. Um, you can face the front of your mat. So usually with Tibetan rites, I'm going to say, you know, they're done in 21. We're gonna do 10. If you need to do fewer, you do fewer. How are you doing? Um, I, I'm thinking of how I'm, I, I might be slightly off my mat. So the first one is spinning and you spin to your right. I'll, I'll turn so that we'll, we can all go in the same direction. And you imagine that you're gonna spin on a dime. So you're not gonna start in one place and end up here. You're gonna end and start at the same spot. So your arms are out at a T position. Your palms are, facing down, arms are not high or low, and you start to your right and keep looking, look to the front and there's two, and you, if you can go fast, and three, if you need to stop, you stop, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you're gonna complete and then you'll be facing me. And when you are done, keep your eyes open and just stay here until the dizziness subsides. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> yeah, it's like, whoa. Okay. Taking a breath in. And the more you do these, faster the dizziness subsides. This is great for longevity, according to Tibetans. It helps with balance. It's actually something that kind of sometimes all, you could almost go so far as to say terrifies people as they're older, like they want to fall. So, and then release, okay. The next one are leg raises. We're coming on to our backs. Yep, coming on to our backs. And, uh, and then once you're on to your back, you're gonna pull knees to chest. And remember, these are done like, you know, they, they work their way up till they condition themselves. So you can do 21 every single day, first thing in the morning and rather quickly too, but we're not. Do them so fast. Okay, keep hugging right knee to chest. Extend your left leg down to the mat. Lift your head. Wake you up in your abdominals. Let go of your your legs so you can reach. And then we'll do the other side. Hugging left knee to chest. Lifting your head. Head to knee. And standing. And release. And the legs are up into the air. So uh, to make this easier, you could take your hands under your back. So I, I'm going to do five with my hands under the back, five without, okay? If not, then the hands will be flat on the mat. Try to keep your low back down, feet are together, and you lower your legs. You don't have to lower all the weight, about an inch above the floor if possible, and then lift. And that's one. And with your breathing, exhale down, exhale completely and inhale up, relax your neck, exhale down, and inhale up, 
Exhale down, it's very difficult to keep the low back down and up and down and up. For some, it's probably easy to keep the back down. Now I'm gonna do the last five without uh, my hands underneath me, one down and up. Exhale down, inhale up, exhale down, up, and exhale down, good, up. And last one, you could do one leg at a time too, Jim. Do one leg at a time, good. and then up, and then pulling knees right into chest, and rock, rock, side, side. So uh, let's just take the legs up in the air again and um, practice this. So hands under you or not. This is, I should have shown this earlier, modified. You could take one leg part way down or hovering. So and hands could be underneath you. That's much more doable if your back doesn't like these. You can try the other one. Sometimes less is more because I can really work my back down and get a lot out of this and rise up. Okay. Let's extend the legs. It's a mini Shavasana. <laughs> you just let your palms be up and actually the Tibetans are, the, the, they call these the five Tibetans. Um, they really focus on giving you ample time to relax. So eyes can be closed, take a deep breath in, see if you have that skill to just let yourself go. It is a skill and it's a good skill to have. I used the skill this morning. <laughs> when I, I got this email, sort of like it had the ability to rattle me. And then I was like, ah. took a deep breath in. I didn't lie down, but I just sat there and did what you're doing. Like completely let go. And it's good. And then you're going to slowly roll up to sitting. And we have a camel. So um, once again, there'll be 10 of them. And I'm going to have a little padding under my knees. Um, you'll go at your pace and, you know, if you're a seasoned uh, Tibetan practitioner, then you would say you would go super fast. We're going to do 10, yeah, you know, a normal clip. So starting out, your hands are to your heels. Your head is lowered. Maybe your head has to rest on a block each time or you're holding down. And then we come up. It's going to be camel. So maybe your camel is modified and slowly, slowly, you'll be able to bring your, uh, your hand to heel. Um, see how this works for you. You can do all the variations you like. And two. And exhale down. Inhale up, three. Works with the flexible spine and that idea that you're as limber as you're as young as your spine is limber. Okay, that's four and five. Six and seven. And nine. And ten. Last one. And when you come to child's pose, we're going to reach the arms forward and then walk over to the right. Take hold of your left wrist. Give yourself another side bend. Walk over the other way. And grab hold of your right wrist. Lowering your head and stretching the right side of your torso. Just enough time here to really breathe in deep into your rib cage. 
and back to center. So yeah, we've got another built-in mini Shavasana. <laughs> so isn't that nice, Julie? So we come right onto our backs and uh, and you know we're gonna get really good at this. <laughs> so we come out, but what is it? What is it about? You know, it is really about finding this instant stillness, clearing the mind, tuning in, feeling your spine. Take another few rounds of breath. I'm sorry, the in studio the lights are bright. Just imagine you're outside in the sun. <laughs> And then, so we're gonna come up to sitting. So here's what I say. Um, the ne next one isn't so good for everybody's shoulders and wrists. So you'll you'll see how you uh, feel about it. Um, if you want to modify, you'd be doing bridge up and down, okay? But if you can, you're going to do tabletop. So well, we're gonna get 10 of them. So you would start out, um, hands are either on your knees, on your thighs, or on your shin bones. Always the feet are together in this phase. And then you separate the feet so they're hip distance apart and you press up. That's all the inhalation. Exhale down and feet together. And that would complete one, right? And then we have two. Inhale, pressing up. Exhale down, finish out the exhalation, and then up. Three. Four. This helps to strengthen the back and the posture. And just the correct posture. Seven, eight, nine. Last one, best one, press up, lower, finish out the exhalation, and then we'll lie on our backs. So decompress your wrists especially if you're doing that, that version of it. And, you know, the leg lifts strengthen the front of your body. And what we just did strengthens the back of your body. So it's like this balance. Of, so you, your carriage, you can keep your carriage upright. You can really keep ample space in your ribs, in your lungs, in your heart area. You can breathe heartily, fully. And yes, there's one more. There's five Tibetan rights. So you're going to pull knees into chest. Come on up to sitting. The last one is upward facing dog, downward facing dog. There's 10 of them. Uh, if, if that bothers you, like if your wrists have just had it, <laughs> you can always do cat cow. You can see on hands and knees cat cow. Um, what, I, what I'm hoping you don't do is flip flop. I will show what that looks like. It's... Yeah. So I would like you to really be strong as you come into it and strong as you come back. Okay, so let's begin. We'll uh, measure it out from a plank. So now you know where the feet are and the feet are together the whole time. And when you go back to downward facing dog, you're not really going to shift your feet much. And then inhale forward, look up, exhale back. That would be one. Two, inhale forward, up, exhaling when you go in. Notice when you inhale, there's going to be a little retention as you continue to march. And back up, it's halfway forward.
two more, at least from my count. <laughs> And the last one is the best one. And I know you get a little tired. So see if you can really be strong. The last one. Good. All the way back. Stretching back. Good. Come to child's pose for a moment. Just bring your hands back by the heels. And let your head drop down. And then from here, we're going to come to another mini Shavasana. There you go. So you're on your backs again. You're like, this is too good to be true. <laughs> okay. How could this be? Okay. And then what I want you to do is, um, so like my watch is in the Yeah, I want you to um, arrange your hands so you can actually feel the, you know, your palms are up and then do that flexion so you can feel the back of your wrist pushing down into the floor. My, my hands are wider than my mat. I'm just pushing down from the back of my wrist. My elbows aren't even touching down anymore. My arms are straight and I'm pushing the back of the wrist down. So we just got a, a little way to relieve the arms and then just let everything relax. Take a breath in and exhale. So, uh, we move on, and, and I hope you like those. I, I, I do love those. Um, we're going to do a twist from here on our backs, and then one from sitting, and et cetera, et cetera. So you take your right foot onto your left knee, and you'll come across, right knee coming over to the left. Turn your head to the right so you can get your right shoulder down. And maybe... This is it for you, or you come, you go into a pretzel. So you take right hand, left foot, right hand, left foot. And that might be enough. And going up, right yeah. hand, left foot. Oh, the back, the other hand. And, oh, yes, that's it. <laughs> you have. Right, left, left. Oh, okay. So I see you're going the other way. So that I'm might be that way. Yep. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay, there you go. Uh, okay. Yep, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you want, if you want to go deeper, you straighten your right leg. It could be on the floor, or you could grab a strap. Left hand holds right foot. It's it is truly a left right kind of thing. And then yeah, and maybe you have a hand to foot and turn your head to the right so you can get your right shoulder down. You look around on the screen, see what I see. <laughs> that looks good, Bill. You got it. That's quite the pretzel. Okay. Oh, we're going to go the other way. All right, second sign. So we're going to uh, bend. Which one is it now? Left knee. <laughs> I'm looking over at. I'm looking over at Bondra. <laughs> Okay, so left knee coming across. I know I'm like I'm looking about or, or, as if she's gonna tell me, and she kind of did by doing it. And then as you there, then bend your lower leg, right hand. Let's see, no, left hand, right foot, left hand, right foot. 
and just think opposites, right? And then you're turning and make sure you're not doing the same side twice. And, and I bet you're okay. And then the variation you did on the first side, if you need a strap to extend your left leg, go ahead and use that strap. It's like a, it gets everything. <laughs> your spine, your shoulders, your quads, your hip flexors, hamstrings, outer hip. <laughs> This is this is And then we'll go ahead and come on out. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll make our way to sitting. So you can kind of roll a little bit. You can do, uh, if you just come to sitting or do a little bit of rolling back and forth. I'm not even going all the way back, though, if you want, you can. You can go all the way back to plow and then forward. But next time you come forward, have the soles of the feet together and uh, holding the feet. Lengthen the spine, try not to sink and breathe. Good. Deep breath in. Exhale. Shall I do the fans? You guys want fans? Are you guys sure. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll release. So we are um we're going to come up to scanning and we have a whole uh, sequence coming up so we're going to come right up to scanning uh and we're going to start out with uh we'll start out with someone so you might want two blocks okay so we're So there are lunges, and then they uh, their lunges. There's three lunges, and then sounds like three lunges, <laughs> three lunges, and then twists. Um, one of the lunges you'll want a little blanket. Um, I'll go ahead and work with blocks. Just for those of you who want to use the blocks, you don't have to. Um, let's start out left leg forward, right, right leg back. So that's my left. And if you did the other side, it's not the end of the world. Uh, and then you decide how you want to work. You know, are you happy with the block? So it's it's what I call a low lunge. And they have, might be high. Maybe you can drop your hip down. Good. And breathe. That's good. So I think God will love these for the hip flexors and all the, and anyone doing practice sports, happy, happy. Or lots of walking, hiking. And... Breathing in. Exhale. Okay, we're gonna switch. So when you switch, the hit, the blocks might go higher, and then you switch sides. And then from here, once again, I'm trying to drop my hip down, and it's stretching the hip flexor, and breathe, clearing the mind of all that internal chatter. One more breath in, exhale. So what we're going to do is after each set, that's one set, you're gonna to come to standing. And just as before you were going into um, Shavasana, mini Shavasana, we come to mountain. And here we are standing in mountain. Sure, but you can see me there. So we're taking a breath in, exhale. Second side and now um, second come around. So left foot is forward, right foot steps back. And this time the knee will come down. Your knee is going to come down. And once the knee comes down, 
we're going to take the arms up, press the knee. So you might be way back, maybe you're able to come forward. Uh, perhaps your balance allows you to reach up and back. Um, it, even, especially if you're looking up, you can't see your left foot, but you can you can feel what it's doing. Are the toes clenching? Can you extend the toes? Press the heel and bulk foot down, and then lower, and we'll reverse sides. So we come forward and left foot back, left knee down, crescent move. So here we go, reaching the arms up. Releasing and we're going to switch again. So the first we'll come to standing and let's go ahead and come to a mountain pose. Hands at your sides or at your heart. Eyes can be closed so you can really go inside and notice any changes. Notice the feeling, sensation, what it's like here. Third one. So we come down and now the right leg is back. Now what I do is I take my left foot to the outside edge of the mat. So it's lizard. Back knee comes down. And that might be it for you. Maybe blocks on the high end. You can drop your elbows down. Make sure they don't slip on you. Maybe you can go lower or lower or elbows all the way down, right? So we have a lot of different ways, hands down, elbows down, and breathe. So it's a, we've got really three distinct lunge, family of lunge poses here. Good work. And then you can then either just dropping your head down, which is very good. And then let's come up, um, bring your foot on the inside, and then we'll switch. So right foot forward, left foot back, knee down. And then the right foot goes to the outside edge of the mat. So it's fine to, because you, you get, it's a different area of the opening here. Maybe down. Okay, and then we come out, and again, we're going to step forward in mountain. And guess what? There's going to be three more of this family with twists. Okay, so here you are. Exhale. Take a breath. And then Tadasana, Tadasana on the mountain. All right. So here's how it goes. Um, right foot goes back, and you're going to keep your back knee up. Your left leg is forward, and either your hand is on block or not. And you're going to twist. So pretty simple twist. So what we're going to do is you'll see the, all three twists are at once. Okay, so there's one. 
And then the next one goes, the knee is down. And from crescent moon, uh, your right arm is up. And the easiest way would be you twist, hand on low back, or you can take your elbow cross knee, or start to lift the back knee. So you straighten your right leg. Are we ready to move on? Okay. <laughs> You're like, oh my God. Let's go ahead and switch. Okay. Um, sorry, I switched it. Oh, well, that's okay. We'll do two on this side, then I'll pick up later. I got a little distracted. Okay. So um, so the next one, the next one you're in, it's just the simple one. Right foot is forward, second side. We'll do two on this side. Arm is up. I'm oh, switching sides. We're switching sides. Yeah. After two. two After nine. two, I made a mistake. And that this could be really dynamic, it could be super simple or very dynamic. And then now the knee is down, and it could be as simple as being upright and twisting or elbow cross knee twisting. And then that's where <laughs> you're like, ah, because when you extend the leg, it's tiresome, it's, it's a lot of work. And then you change it. So we've got that 90 degree bend. Take one more breath here. Inhale. Exhale. Step forward. Step the mountain. And then you'll see we'll have the third one. I'm glad we took a little detour though because. These, these can be intense. <laughs> How are we doing there? You want to drink a lot of water after class. Okay, okay so it's like part three of the second step, right? All right, so it is pyramid. And uh, what you might say is that there's no twist with it, or there might be. So I'm taking left foot forward, right foot back. I'm going to clasp hands and look up and breathe. Arch your back. You shouldn't feel like you're struggling with balance because you're on a double track. If you're on a single, like a balance beam, you might feel like you're struggling with balance, but your feet are on two tracks here. And then hands are onto your pelvis and imagine you're tipping your pelvis forward. You might have to bend your left knee, um, straighten if you can. And that's where blocks might come in handy. It's an intense hamstring stretch initially, pure. So blocks or no blocks. And my, like, well, my left hip loves to curl forward. So I try to shift it back. And it is up to you. Some of you are like, ooh, stay here. Or maybe walk your hands to the outside left foot. That might be enough for you, like just a, a nice side stretch. Or maybe you've got your block handy again. Your right hand would be on a block, left hand on your low back, and you're gonna turn, mm -hmm, uh, turning to your left, and maybe left arm comes up into the air. You've got it. And so aren't you glad I made that little mistake and didn't send you through all three of these all at mm -hmm. once? Like, you can kind of get a reprieve and come into good energy, renewed energy. Come on out and let's step forward. Mountain heel a little off because we haven't done side one and two. Julie, we almost got it wrapped. <laughs> okay, left foot back. Take your hands behind the back, roll the shoulders back and look up. Arch. Okay, and then we're starting to come forward. So again, you can use blocks if you like for this. It's a lot of hamstring stretch. 
if possible, right leg is straight, if possible, right hip is moving back. And if you would like to go further, of course, you could walk to the outside left foot, uh, no, outside right foot, outside right foot. And there I get more of the leg stretch, but also a, a side stretch along the left side. And we can twist. So in that case, my left hand probably could be on a block or on the mat. Um, right hand on the low back, twist, turn. And when you can't turn anymore from your torso, then the arm comes up, like the arm is that finishing touch. Wow. Okay. Some of you make this look easy. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> and then release, come on out, good job. And then step forward in the happiest mountain ever. Got that under your belt there. <laughs> okay. And it can be hands to heart or hands at your sides. And just take a round of breath here. Exhale. And then with the arms, we're going to reach up. Inhale. Exhale. And bend the knees. Tap down. And then come to chair. So your feet, your knees are bent, feet are together and then reach into chair. That's good. Arms to be forward, a little easier. Arms alongside ears, more intense. We're going to do that again. Reach up, extend, and then sweep the arms out, bend the knees, tap down, and then come into chair. So there, of course, there's going to be three. The third one's going to be the best one. <laughs> and then up, arms to the back. So here is your, um, is your weight evenly on the feet? Or yeah, on your heels? it's supposed to be evenly on the feet. So the question online is, uh, where's the weight on your feet? So if I don't make um, much of an effort, my weight is going to be forward. So what I, I bring my weight back, because I do want weight on my heels, but it should be evenly. That was a good, good question, because it sometimes feels like there's a lot of weight on my heels, because I'm trying to even things out and then reach up back, good, and cancel to heart. So this um, last one about standing, we'll do on the standing. Um, well, we'll see how it goes. It, it is the last one, but there's a little more to it. Um, it's extended side angle. So you have the front of your mat, your right foot opens out wide. You'll bend your left knee. And there's like, there's so many variations. So one could be elbow, hand on knee, elbow on knee, or my lower hand reaching for the ankle. And for all of us, top arm up overhead. And three. And then retract your arm. Now, you're going to take your right knee down. It's going to be a twist, half spinal twist, Ardha Matsandrasana. So you're going back. And if your knee isn't happy, you might have to readjust completely. So I'm going back. And I have my left leg over the other. If that doesn't work for you, right leg straight. Okay. So okay. all of us have the left leg on top. Okay. And you just, I always think you have to be careful with your knees on that. So right arm up. Elbow across knee and twist. Look down. Hand pressing to the floor, to the mat. So from extended side angle to half spinal twist. We'll see how it goes. And then you're going to straighten out your legs. Come onto your back. And as you come onto your back, you're going to come up into bridge and hold this bridge. So uh, clasping hands under you, tuck shoulders under you, bridge. 
Now, there might be some of you can go into a full wheel pose. You can do Urva Danyarasa, the full back bend. You can go there. You might say, no way. I'm just going to stay right here. Uh, but I, I want to open that up because this would be the time that you're pretty open right now. And with the warm weather, the spine is more limber. Mm -hmm. And you're coming out. And you have happy baby. So you reach, some have to reach behind the knees, many can reach the feet, go wide and breathe. Stretching your lower back. And then taking the soles of the feet together, you have bound angle. Hands are onto the belly. Breathe in. Exhale. The temptation is just to stay here for the next 15 minutes, <laughs> but we won't be a whole other side of you. Breathe in. Exhale. Interlace fingers, press palms up overhead, full upper body stretch, active. Retract the arms, bring your knees together. You can help yourself come up to sitting. You'll sit cross-legged and just nice upright spine. And we come to downward facing dog. So uh, for some, that's a whole different way than I'm doing it. You can use your hands to come forward and then you come back and maybe that just doesn't work for you. You adjust accordingly. So we end up in downward facing dog. And we did these, we did 10 of them earlier, but this one is a little more held. So you can really stretch and you could pedal, bend one knee, press on the heel down. If you want, you could also try a little something. Your feet wide is easier. And I'm going to challenge you, those who can do this, your feet closer in. Left hand, right outside ankle. Left hand, right outside ankle. And you twist. You turn from your belly. You can hold the knee, of course. And the other side. Left hand, anchor down. Right hand can touch your outside left knee or ankle and twist. And then step forward, and you're going to stay in a forward fold. So pause here, stretching your hamstrings. Take your hands to your head and gently pull. Lengthen the back of your neck. And then softening the knees, we'll sweep the arms up. Oh, we have a whole other side. And then hands to heart, and uh, here's what we do. We start out and we face the other way on the mat. So it'd be, it's extended side angle. Now that's my right leg that, that leads. And then here, bending and different ways could be hand on knee, elbow on knee, hand reaching for your ankle. It's pretty much in all levels class. I'd say we have all of the levels here. Listen to your body like you listen to my idea, my guidance, and ultimately you listen to your body's guidance. So let's savor each pose. This is one and so, so powerful. We're going to come down. Now, um, the hand comes down, the back knee comes down, it's half spinal twist. So whichever way is easiest for your knees, you'll end up right leg on top of the other. Maybe left leg is straight or knee bent. Left arm up and twist towards your raised leg.
releasing, coming out, and then we're going to straighten the legs. We're coming to bridge. So as you come to bridge, uh, just pausing, feel it. Now it feels different because you've worked both sides and you're going to start to lift your pelvis, clasp hands underneath you, tuck shoulders underneath you. And again, uh, just depends on you. You might be very happy here or you feel like there's a, you know, something compelling you to go deeper than you go into a full back bend. You are plenty warm and warmed up and you're even. We're going to start to come out. And when you come out, you'll come to happy baby, dead, yeah, dead mother, happy baby. So you're holding your feet, you go wide, knees are wide. And you could rock side to side. And then let's come to bound angle, Julie's smile pose. And it's like, yeah, nice big smile. So the soles of the feet are together, outside feet resting to the mat. Yeah. Sutta Bada Kodasa, your hands onto your belly, breathe into your hands. And just feel there's no restraints, nothing holding your fullness of breath, nothing's holding it back. Mind is clear. Body also feels like it's also clear of tension, any clear of negativity, which is really, really a, a gift. Interlace your fingers, press palms up overhead, and full body stretch. Active through the arms. Beautiful. And then release the arms. You'll bring your knees together. Look yourself up to sitting. And you know, um, here's what I would like to do. Um, we'll, we'll bring it back to our downward facing dog. We'll finish complete the cycle. So come back, downward facing dog, and hold for a moment. Shake out your head. And this also should feel different from the last time you did it because you're you are you're even on the sides. Yeah. Hello, Willow. <laughs> yeah. And then go ahead and start to bring your self forward on your mat, you're in a forward bend. Uh, your feet can be close together, hands to elbows or your hands to the back of your head and gently pull, give your head traction, give your neck traction. And then slowly come up. And as you come up, take a moment and Finding your mountain pose. Let's let's take the arms up, reach up, palms touch, and you just you have that sense of completion, balance. I always I always feel like when I'm guiding you, I'm guiding from an inside place, and I always feel like our experiences. I know they're different, they're unique to who you are, but I think there's a common thread, and I. I hope that the feeling is seen within you, this sense of balance. Uh, I always feel like there's that common thread that that's what we're feeling. Let's come to um, sitting. And, uh -huh. oh, it was, okay, good. We have two minutes to try a Tibetan breathing exercise. 
<laughs> because I want to give you a poll, um, Shavasta. So you're you're sitting. If it makes sense to sit on a block so you're more comfortable, that's fine. I want you to sit comfortably. And uh, here's what we do. It's pretty simple. Remember, I said Tibetan practices are simple but profound. So what you're going to do is you're going to inhale, and internally you'll count one. You're going to exhale, eyes are closed, all nasal breathing, and internally count one. Inhale, one, two. Exhale, counting one, two. Inhale, one, two, three. Exhale, you'll count internally, one, two, three. Inhale. One, two, three, four. Exhale, counting to four. Even though the breath takes way longer. Inhale, counting internally to five. Exhale, counting internally to five. Normally we'd go to 10 and then count back. We're going to five today and then we're gonna go back. Next time you inhale, count to four. Exhale, four counts, counting internally. Inhale, counting three, one, two. Exhale, counting to three. Inhale. One, two. Exhale, counting to two. Inhale, count to one. Exhale, count to one. And so on and so forth. Then you would gradually go up. You would go to two, to three, to four, to five and then down again, and it's very simple. I'm gonna to come to lying on our backs. Like what I would like you to notice, all the lights in the studio, I would like you to notice how profound that is. Like all you had to do was think about your breathing and counting and everything else, any remnants of chaos within fell to the side, dissipated, disappeared. Now you just simply don't have to alter your breath at all. You are observing.
who will remember those uh, Tibetan words of wisdom as we're here. One, I think that we can feel so strongly as we're in Shavasana's to love without measure. I think we see eat half, eating half, walk double, laugh triple, and love without measure. So we're going to start to move the hands and the feet and just uh, gradually roll to one side. And then uh, make your way. And those of you online, you could turn on your audio if you like. 